Okay, shall I just let you know what documents I've got? Uh, there is an issue as to none of these have yet been posted to the website that the court created for this matter, and I have a question as to whether that can be done. Uh, I've got uh, the applicant submissions of the file the 15th of June. Uh, the respondent, uh, well, uh, I've got respondent submissions filed 25 June, uh, but I understand that that may, may have been overtaken by events. So I've got Mr Sibtain's submissions um, of the 25th of June, Mr Dowling's submissions of the 25th of June, an affidavit of Rebecca Giles of the 15th of June, uh, and Mr Dowling's affidavit of the 24th of June, which I assume is all of the relevant material. So does anybody have any difficulty with the documents to which I referred uh, being made public? Your Honour, I have, my, well, my clients have one objection to um, part of Ms Giles' affidavit sworn 15 June 2021. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see if that, is that going to be read, Mr Walker? We'll probably work out whether that's going to be read first of all. Uh, yes, we want to read it, but I think I can anticipate and meet uh, the objection as follows. Um, I invite correction if I'm if I'm wrong, but uh, paragraph 18 um, refers to correspondence, uh, copies of which are set out at pages 27 to 30 of the exhibit. Yeah. Um, it's not necessary to read those um, because they go to questions, I'll call them simply of aggravation. I'll yeah. explain that a bit more later. Um, the existence of an issue concerning aggravation is sufficiently demonstrated by the pleadings and the fact that there had been what I might call chapter and verse exchanged in correspondence is now uh, we accept uh, a matter of um, prehistory for today's application. Uh, for for those reasons, we don't rely upon the detail of the attached correspondence, uh, given that the pleading pleadings uh, record the issue concerning aggravation. Okay, so you don't read the last sentence of eighteen. That's correct, Your Honour. And then the uh, exhibit 20, pages 27 to 30 don't come in. That's correct. Okay, does that deal with your oh, objection, no. Ms. Enborn? Oh, you're on mute, sorry. My apologies, Your Honour. Uh, that does, Your Honour, if pages 27 to 30 are removed from the bundle of documents at exhibit 2. Okay. That does deal with the issue. All right, well, I might, uh, can your instructing solicitor, Mr. Walker, um, provide a, uh, a, a redacted version of the affidavit with only with 27 to 30 out of it and the last sentence of 18 struck, struck through, a copy in that form? Uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure, Your Honour, whether that is something that can be done Oh, not right um, now. Yeah. Immediately. But no, I'm, no. It, I mean, in due course. Yes, it will be done, and I yeah. trust today. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm assuming nobody else has an objection to Ms. Giles' affidavit, so that affidavit will be read, subject to those matters, and ultimately that will be placed on the um, website in the redacted form. Uh, is there any? That's your evidence, isn't it, Mr. Walker? Yes, sir. Uh, there's another affidavit. It's yours, Mr. Dowling. Do you seek to read your affidavit? Uh, yes, Your Honour. Does anybody object to Mr. Dowling's affidavit? Your Honour, the whole of it is irrelevant, but it is easier to dealt with as a matter of substantive argument. Other people take the same view? Yep, I'm going to say that affidavit's read as well. Um, so that affidavit is in. I'm assuming you, nobody has, does anybody have any objection to Mr Dowling's affidavit going on to the court's website? No, Your Honour. No, no one? Okay, no, well, that will 
happen. And I'm assuming there's no objection to the submissions um, that are in relation to this application uh, being posted to the website as well.